So thank you again to our panelists for being here. We're going to start our discussion today around defining trauma. So uh, we know that trauma is a broad, uh, has a, a broad de definition and probably many definitions depending on who we're talking to. So uh, for our context today, I'm going to start with Chelsea around the, the definition of trauma and we'll all kind of weigh in here. And then we're also going to talk about how trauma might manifest just generally speaking within our human bodies. So Chelsea, would you like to take a stab at this one first? Yeah, um, and you're absolutely right, Jackie. There, There's day-long, week-long presentations on defining trauma and identifying trauma. Um, and I I think one of my favorite definitions is by Gabor Mate. Dr. Mate said that trauma is not what happens to you, uh, it's what happens inside of you as a result of what happens to you. Um, and why I really love that definition is because it acknowledges the nervous system, the body, um, as key to assessing reaction. Um, and I know some people will say, well, I don't have trauma, but I have a bunch of little things that happened over the course of a life uh, that aren't really trauma necessarily, which we sometimes call big T, like the things that stand out as trauma. But those little things over the course of a life can create nervous system responses and body reactions. So there may not be a single trauma that we're working with, we're working with a lifetime of nervous system dysregulation or activation in the body. Um, so I love this definition by Gabor Mate. Yeah, Bill, I see you nodding. I know that you have, have thoughts around this as well. Yeah, yeah. You know, I think this is this is uh this is key as to understanding, you know, that there is a self-protective mechanism that that is really fundamental to our experience as human beings you know our bodies and our uh, most basic nervous system function is is built around survival and if you have experienced a single event that's overwhelming um, that can uh, your nervous system can adapt very quickly to a survival response that becomes perpetual um, and that influences your behavior throughout your life. Um, but as Chelsea was noted, it might not be one uh, single instance, but it could be the cumulative effect of being held in a state of activation, you know, in a perpetual stress response. Uh, and you think of, um, you know, uh, racism or poverty or, uh, you know, gender discrimination, that these things over the course of a lifetime, your nervous system and your body is adapting at a very fundamental level mm -hmm. for its uh, own survival. And this, to me, uh, you know, really gets it at what uh, trauma is. You know, it's that internal response that may be entirely appropriate to the environmental circumstances that that you're living in. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, Mariah, do you want to add in, and then we'll we'll start talking a little bit about how this might look trauma might look or or feel or sound etc for folks yeah yeah something that's coming up i think in response to what you just added bill is i'm a big fan of resma menicum's work who's the author of several books including my grandmother's hands and resma mm. has this wonderful quote and he says that trauma decontextualized in a person over time can look like personality trauma decontextualized in a family over time can look like family traits and trauma decontextualized in a people over time can look like culture. And I think that that's kind of the bridge between both how we define trauma and then some of the things I think that that we're building on here in terms of what Chelsea shared about the body and the nervous system, Bill, what you're sharing about uh, chronic experiences of oppression and discrimination, right? That trauma is both what we experience in our own bodies and nervous systems, but it's also what we experience collectively, historically, intergenerationally. Yeah. Um, it's it's deeply rooted in in identity and um, and it's experienced collectively, which is also a part of the reason why we have a lot of dialogue about um, why fitness and movement can be also a really transformative collective way of healing. Mm -hmm. um, and so holding that understanding of the ways that trauma um, is experienced and defined both individually, I think, and collectively is, is important for us to, to remember. Mm 